welcome everyone. Thank you so much, Kathy, for having me here tonight. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to talk about how you, as an individual trader, can profit huge trading on the same side as institutional money. And we're going to talk today about what exactly that is as well. If you have any questions after the webinar tonight, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com, or you can feel free to also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or give me a call if you have any questions as well at 929-3200 GAP. So tonight we're going to talk about something where, you know, you're going to learn a little bit. You're going to learn something here tonight in this lecture about charts and about how to read money in charts, which is very important because if you can ascertain what direction a stock is going to move or where the money is going to move, higher or lower, in a stock chart before it actually does the move, then you can take a trade before the move happens and you can profit and you can profit substantially. So what is institutional money? It's, it's a lot of money that happens in the market in stocks, big size, hedge funds, banks, all of that is considered institutional money and it moves stocks. And actually there's a report tonight that's happening right now. Google is reporting their earnings and that's being moved by institutional money as well. And if we have time, we'll look at the chart when we're done here tonight. So, one of the important things I think that traders, you know, make a mistake on, I guess I want to say, is that they're constantly waiting before they take trades and they almost wait too long. They miss the move. Most traders tend to wait, 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 and then they miss the move. They miss the momentum, they miss the volatility. They're waiting for pullbacks and stocks to take positions and, and they're missing it, okay, or they're missing a big portion of the move or most of the move of a stock. So how do you not miss it? You have to predict where the money's going to move it before it actually does it. And then you will be able to take the trade and then you won't miss most of the move. Okay. So for me, I've created a method where I can determine what direction a stock's going to move before it does it after it gaps. Now, if you don't know what a gap is, we're going to go over that tonight as well. But here is an example of something where if you were waiting, Okay, this is today's short, which was HIB. This is a one minute chart. And this is really squished. I squished this here because I wanted you to see the entire move of the stock on the day, or pretty much down in here until two o'clock. This was the open here at 9.30. So HIB gapped this morning. Now, if you don't know what a gap is, a gap is when a stock closes at one price the night before, which it did, this was Friday at four o'clock, at approximately 19 something, and open the next morning down here. Boom, okay, at 14 something. So, the, so a, a gap is when a stock closes at one price and opens the next day at another one. That's it. That's all the gap is. Now, this is a one minute. But what I predicted this morning before the market opened and before HIB opened was that the stock would drop on the day. And it did. If you were waiting for this stock HIB to pull back, it never really pulled back. It almost opened and just sold off immediately. In fact, it did. So HIB was a short. And for those of you that don't know me or know anything about me, I prefer to short. And one of the reasons I like to short in my day trades is because selling action happens fast and quick. And I like to trade in the morning and get out very, very quickly. Okay, so that's what this HIB did. If you were waiting, though, for a pullback or any kind of significant rally in HIB today, you really didn't get it. You really didn't get it. The stock just opened and fell. So the money in HIB today was to take an aggressive short and, and it, ha it had a really big move. Actually, this went to some crazy number I didn't even have written down today. It looks like 13, 1330 it got to. So this was a nice move. The stock dropped more than a dollar on the day. And in the morning, it dropped into the first target, which was 14 bucks, 14.25, $14. If you're one of these people that has been trading for a long time, trying to figure out how to do this thing, which is, you know, make money in the market, then you have to kind of sometimes step back and look at your actions. What are you doing that you're not having the results that you want? And, 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 and there's an assumption here that if you're here today listening to me that you're not having the results that you want in your, in your trading method and that because you're coming to listen to mine because you're looking for something else, okay? And I find that a lot of people need to change the way that they think about trading. It's like a lot of people have been conditioned to think that they cannot be aggressive in something, that they cannot take something into the volatility or into the momentum, that they have to wait for some kind of pullback 
and that's not the case, okay? For me, when I take my trade, the setup on the live day is a confirmation. It's just a confirmation. The gap that happens in the morning in the post or pre-market is what I was what I'm doing the prediction, what I'm looking for, what it's doing. Okay. So if you're not as successful as you want to be as a trader, the best thing you could do for yourself is do some self-analyzation, look at what you're doing, figure out if your system isn't working, or maybe your system does work, but it's something that you're doing that's incorrect. Sometimes people miss, you know, size their trades wrong. Sometimes people don't get their entries right. You know, sometimes people are not disciplined enough. I don't know, you know, again, what the reason that you're here for or what you're doing right now or if you're a brand new trader or a person looking to trade. But I definitely, definitely think that it's important if you're not making money to kind of step back. Because the worst thing that you want to do is to continue to trade for the rest of the calendar year. And there's still a good period left in the year that you could be successful and make money, okay? So you don't want to spend the rest of the year losing money. You, you, you know, ideally, you want to spend the rest of the year making money. So one of the cornerstones to everlasting success that you want to see as a trader, okay, in the market is consistency. And I think a lot of people struggle with this. But I'm telling you, you can be consistent. If you've been dreaming of being successful in the market for years, but success has eluded you, then stop and consider why. You know, you can get to that point where you really comprehend and understand stuff en enough that you can make money doing this. And I say this because not only have I been doing it now for almost nine years, but I actually am pe teaching people to do it too. There's people that I've taught, you know, more than five years ago when I started the business that are successful. I've, some of them aren't even in the trading room anymore. They trade on their own. Um, you know, you don't need me to do this. Once you learn my method, you can do it by yourself. Although I think being in my trading room is a good support system for people, but it, it really is possible to make money in the market. So if you're thinking about doing it, now might be a good time. Now let's talk about what I was saying earlier about institutional money, okay? Part of the way that you will make money in the market is you gotta get the direction right. So if you wanna go long a stock, the price has to be lifting. If you're gonna short a stock, you will make money if the stock is selling off and dropping, okay? So how do I figure that out? I use advanced technical analysis. Okay, and you can Google that and read about what that is, but it's really chart reading. I'm reading price action in charts. So I'm reading the footprints of institutional money that come into charts, and I'm, then I'm making the prediction, okay? This was a recent, actually I've called two option trades in CMG. This is just in the last month. This is recent, okay, where you could have done options trades puts, so the stock dropped. And this is a good chart. It's one of the best charts I've seen in a long time to really show you the power of institutional money. Now, why? Let's go all the way back. Okay, this is down here. You can see this is a daily chart. This is back here to June 20th. So June 20th, the stock got. Again, the stock closed up here the night before, opened the next day here at a different price. It opened and it sold off. So if you had shorted the stock this day, you would have made money. So I call the put in this an option. And the reason sometimes that I call puts versus day trades or, or calls versus day trades is because of the fact that sometimes the stock's very expensive. In this case here, this was expensive, okay? So this was a, a better quality option trade than a day trade, but you could have done both. And you also could have done it as a swing trade. Anyways, the high in here is approximately like 445-ish. From June 20th, and this is down into today, so basically a month, the stock has fallen off a planet. Low today was like 336.50. The stock has dropped more than 110 points within a month. How did that happen? So I called an option trade here in this day. I called an option trade here in this day. They both worked. There were huge trades. But the point is, how did I predict that the stock would fall. And actually, the interesting thing is that I predicted the dream target was 350. It actually got almost 15 points through that. And even at the time that I said 350, the stock was 100 points away. This is selling. The stock, the stock is particularly at this price point actually, which is why it's a really good example, would never be able to run like this to the downside just automatically here. Look at this, it's just going straight down without selling. Big selling, huge selling. This is volume down here. This depicts the volumes. This is the volume bar. You can see it on the day here, the gap. 
And then here was the day there was some news in the stock. Look at the volume that day too. And then the, then the days after. And it's still lower. Although this has earnings tomorrow night, so I don't know exactly what this does in the earnings. But this is a good, good example of institutional money selling the stock, driving the price down. And as a trader, as a day trader, how would you make money if you could predict this, which I did, and people did make money on my calls, by reading the gaps. Reading the chart is the day chart and reading the, the price, okay, to predict that it was going to sell off. A, and then B, continue to sell off, all right? When institutions take positions in stocks or choose to sell them, like in the case of the CMG, that stock is being sold, okay? The long positions are being sold off. There's a level of commitment that comes in because, for example, when a stock buys, when a, when a, when a uh, hedge fund buys a company, buys stock in a company, there's a commitment because they usually take big positions and they're not going to just quick get in it for a scalp. They're in it, and they want a big move, and they want a big payoff, okay? Now, also, when a company is long a stock, like a fund, okay, they have a big position, they're long the stock. When the stock price does something where they decide they don't want to be in it anymore, like the CMG, whatever the reasons are, they decided they didn't want to be long the stock anymore. When they dump the shares and sell it, then that's it. There's no more commitment. They want out of that sucker. And in the case we're talking about here tonight, CMG, they want out of the stock. They just want to dump it. And that's how you get that move. So either way, whether it's buying or selling, there's a commitment that comes when big money comes into something or exit, exits it, okay? Which is why you get those dramatic moves. Now, you know, big companies, like I said, banks, funds, institutional money, they, they're constantly doing research reports. They read reports, they listen to earnings, they read earnings reports, they're making decisions for why they're taking something and what they're getting in something for many, many different reasons other than the reasons that you and I would take trades. And we don't have privy to this information, but the fact is that we can see what they're doing with their shares in, when it gaps, okay? So because we can see that, because we can read charts and price in live, live time, like, for example, like Google, it's happening right now. You can see it in live time. Because we can see that, because we have access to that information, we can trade the market and we can make money doing it, okay? Because we will never have access to this type of, of information. It's expensive and it's confidential and, and we just will never know, okay? But once, you know, the powers that be, the people controlling the stocks and the direction of the stocks take a position on or off, then we see it, and then we know, and then we can determine if we want to take the trade in what direction. So the point I'm trying to make here is if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, which was what happened in the CMG, which was a short, then you can take the position in the right direction, and then you get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to trade with this side of power. you got to know how to find it. And then you're going to know how to read it, and you're going to know how to predict it. And if you can, you can take advantage of the big moves that these stocks have, and therefore that's how you're going to make money, okay? So it's very important to understand that institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves stocks, the market, and not only that, it creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And even if you think it's not, it is. And the, and the, and the market, when I say the market, I mean the SPY or the QQQs is a perfect example of that. Now, here we have Netflix. This was a, a, actually an earnings gap that happened last, this was last Monday. Yeah, it was last Monday. Or was it Tuesday? No, yeah, it was Monday night. Monday night, this was Tuesday. So Netflix reported its earnings. What happened here? It got bought. So here's an example of institutional money buying the stock up. Stock closed here, gapped up. So it closed here, gapped up like 10 points plus, ran on the day 10 points, okay? Do you see this in here, how amazing the move was of this stock? So it actually ran over 190 within a week. So do you see here why a lot of people talk about this idea about gap fills? That really doesn't work. It's really not how you determine the direction a stock goes. If you went to short this stock or sell it after the gap, you got creamed. Because not only did they buy it up in the gap, huge, they continued to buy it. 
the stock actually ran up like 16 points from the original open through. So obviously it's higher. Candy is saying dynamic order flow. I just look at the gap and read charts, but whatever you can do to help you to see it clearer and better is fine. Okay, I say whatever can help you do it. I like to just look at the candlesticks and the gap, and then I have a method where I'm using that to predict it. But I, but I, but this is you know another great example because again, look at the price point, look at the move the stock had, look at the move up. Okay. So you really, really, if you want to make money doing this, you've got to have a good skill set. You have to have a good skill set. And for me, it's chart reading. So my ability to read and predict where a stock's going to go based on where institutional money are going to take a gap, okay, is a skill set. And this is something that I do myself every day and I teach people. So, you know, if you're here, you might be interested in what I do. And that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit here. And we're going to go over one of the trades that happened last week. Okay, and we're going to talk about the trades in the last in the last two months. So the strategy that I do, the number one strategy I do, I've kind of been talking about it is gaps, but I created a method and I termed it golden gap because it is like finding gold in the market when you find something that will have a big, big move. So golden gaps, which is a highly qualified gap, they have huge opportunity because they spot power money, power money move stocks. So how do you find these gaps? How, first of all, they, they happen every day, but there's hundreds and thousands of things that gap every day. So how do you know to pinpoint it? Like for example, today, there's a lot to look at today. How did I know HIB was the one today, okay? Because I have a way to rate it with a checklist and I do it in the morning before 9.30. So gaps have to be qualified. You can't just assume because something's gapping up, you can go long it. And you can't just assume that because something's gapping down that you can short it because not every gap down sells off, okay? And also, I must tell you, I do not take positions in stocks until after the open. So I'm not trading in the pre-market, just so you know that. I wait until the stock sets up. Anyways, the checklist that I use, and this is what I teach in my class, it tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. And that's how you know. And then you watch that stock, or as many stocks as rate well that day, because you could have a couple gaps. Okay, actually there was two today that you could have done, but HIB was a top pick. And you trade as many as rate per the system. Gaps are this just, it, it's an event. It's actually an event that happens in the chart. It's a, it's a, it's a major event. It could, be, it could be big, it could be small, but it's an event either way you look at it, okay? And it shows you where the money is going to go based on the criteria in the rating system and the checklist of the points, okay? So I have a 26-point rating system. You do not have to get a perfect score. You do have to get 20 points as a cutoff, 20 points of that 26. And if you've got 20, you can trade the direction, you can trade the gap in the direction of the gap. For example, if a stock gap's down and you rate it per the 26-point checklist, if it rates 20 or more, you can short it. If the gap's up, like Netflix, and it rates 20 or more, you can go long it. And that's how you know what to do. That's how I day trade every day, and that's also how I call the options trades that I'm doing. Okay? Any questions so far? The only thing that can move stocks is power money. Okay? So people are very negative when they talk about, oh, they moved it, they took it in this direction, they did that. But the fact is that the only way that you and I can be successful in the market is if we have this big money moving stocks. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to trade or we'd have to have huge um, huge amounts of money to be able to even get it in the market to begin with to take positions to move them. The, the way that the market is set up is so attractive to regular people, individuals like you and me, no matter how much money you have, as long as you can open up an active day trading account to trade because we can get those moves. Those dollar, two dollar, three dollar, thirty dollar moves like in CMG. We'll never be able to move stocks like that. Never, never, never. Okay, even if I took ten thousand shares of something, even if I shorted ten thousand shares of QCOM, I'd never be able to move the stock in the way that it moved last week. Okay, so it's really good that we have these this power of money in the market because it makes it possible for us to make money. And, and so gaps are something that they're just, they're there. They're there every day. They have big moves. 
It's the reason I like to trade, okay? If I had to wait and trend trade everything, this, this would be a very tricky year for people. As I said at the beginning of the, uh, at the, beginning of the webinar, if you're waiting for pullbacks, you're not long at any stocks that are rallying. Facebook is rallying every day of its life. Amazon too. So if you are a trader that trend trades and you're not getting in, you've missed the entire bullish move for the most part for the calendar year of 2017. If you're a day trader that trend trades, you're not making any money. You know, or you're probably taking crappy entries. You, you've got to learn to go with the momentum and stop waiting for the pullbacks, but you gotta have a way to confirm it, to predict it, and to see it so that it can pay you. So the way that I do it is a 26 point checklist. It's a checklist I fill it every morning before I trade using my system. This is what I teach all my traders in the class. It's the only thing I do I don't have any other method, any other system, any other classes other than this. This is everything I do, even the options trades, all of it. Swing trades is all based on my gap rating method. It's how I can make calls like I did in CMG and IBM, Netflix, all of the above, okay? So how are you gonna make money as a person? You're gonna, you're gonna get in the trade when the money moves. You're gonna think with common sense. You're gonna say, you know what? I'm seeing what this stock IBM is doing and it makes sense for me to take a trade short in this. Here's the target, here's the support, here's the resistance, okay? I have this system, I'm gonna follow it. You can make money as a day trader if you have a system that works consistently and you follow it. Many people do not follow one system, they're all over the place with different things every single day, depends on their mood, depends on what the market is, depends on the wind. I use nothing but this. I fall in all the time. If a trade loses, which I do have some losers, I stop, okay? You have got to think like a normal person. If you wanna do this and make money, you have to act like it's a business, okay? So for me, it's a business to trade. That's how I think of it. I'm looking for the quality. And for me, it's the rating system that tells me the quality. Now, this was a really, really, really nice gap that happened last week. I day traded this. We're gonna go over the trade. I also called an option in this. People are making money in this right now. It's still on. The trade expires this Friday. I think probably a lot of people might have gotten out of this though today. So we're gonna look at it. Here's the chart. IBM, stock had earnings. Okay, so this was last week. Stock closed here the night before, around 154-ish, something like that, gap down to like 150. Open and dropped. Again, look at the move. Do you see the move in here? What would make a stock drop Okay, this price point, this size, this much in a day. This is only between 9.30 and 4. So between 9.30 and 4, it even broke 147. The stock was at like 146 something at the low. So the stock dropped more than $3 in one day. Look, the stock sold off. So it was sold. So you make money shorting the selling action. But I got in at the top. I mean, this was a perfect entry. I'm going to go over and show you this in a minute. You have to learn what buying looks like if you want to go long. This is an example of a SPY. Actually, this was earlier today. We had a bigger move up today in the SPY. We can look at that later too. But the market's been moving higher, 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 higher. Okay, so this is what buying looks like. Institutions are buying the market. This is what selling looks like. Institutions sold IBM and you could have shorted it and you could still be short the stock. Okay, this is the spiders. It's an ETF. It's just about focusing on the right information. But I will tell you something very important. Like I said, I prefer to short, but the irony is, and I never knew this when I started shorting it. I, like I said, I've been focusing on shorts for most of the time I've traded. When you actually learn how to spot weakness, you will know how to spot strength better too. One of the ways I've continually called this market higher and, and, and so bullish and been right on about it is because I'm so good at seeing weakness. So I knew the market wasn't weak. Every time the market was having a red day or falling or doing whatever, I said, That's, this is nothing. We're gonna make a new high, and then we did. So I'm telling you, even the focus with what you're doing, even if you focus on one direction, most of the days you trade, you will become better. That will even give you an edge. That has given me an edge. Now that's not to say that some trades I don't go long, some trades I do, but for the most part I do short. And the only time I really go long is if there's no good shorts, okay? But you will become good at the other direction, if you get good at one first, whether you pick to focus on the shorts or, or the bullish trades first, it doesn't matter, okay? But once you know what to look at, 
It's very, very easy to have conviction. It's very easy to risk the money once you understand what to do. And then it's easy to press the button and you've got to have conviction in order to trade because you're risking your money when you take a trade. It's the only way you're going to make any, okay? Any questions so far? So I'm going to go over and I'm going back here. So this is about the month, about two months, okay, of trains that I called in the room that I just wanted to show everybody because people always say, well, how much money can I make doing this and what's realistic, okay? If you want to join the live trading room with me, it is a prerequisite to have taken my class. And one of the reasons is because I want people to understand what they're doing and I also want people to be committed that I'm spending time with in the room and teaching. But if you, if you want to trade and you want to kind of get an idea how much money could you make, okay, I'm going to show you the stats here from the last two months. And these are risking approximately $1,000 a trade. Some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. Okay, this is not an exact science when I'm sizing myself. Uh, I do not use odd lots. Back on the 18th, you can go. Cisco was a winner. 900 Foot Locker, 2450 was off Memorial Day holiday. Coors was $700 profit. HP was a really nice one, 2500. EXPR was a loser. Red Hat 1260 winner, HTS was a great gap, 4200 So you see here how you will have an occasional loser. My system averages anywhere between, you know, around 80%. Some days it's over 80, some days it's a little under 80, but I sh you should figure for every 10 trades that you take, eight will be winners and two will be losers to give you some idea. Now, what if you didn't want to risk $1,000 a trade? That's fine, divide it by two to, get to see what your results would have been or divide it by four. Say you want to risk 250 a trade. Okay, to get some idea here. And these are the ones for June. You can go through and look at these later. I am recording the webinar for everyone. Again, look at this in here. Had two losers, Adobe and Oracle, the losers, and look at the next day, huge. So this is why you don't, you don't, you don't go off the deep end. Say you take a trade one day, it doesn't work, okay? And this actually went through my stop here, the Adobe. So you take a trade, it doesn't work, you get up the next day. You keep going, you believe in the system. And again, here was the following weekend to the end of June, then started July, and Hog was last week, no trades last Monday. Then last week, IBM, great day, we're gonna go over that trade shortly, 42.50. QCOM was a good one, and actually I took a quick trade in this, this continued, G was a loser on Friday, and today was hit. So this is total, total, actually this is 28. Uh, wins and eight losses, a 78% win ratio. So if you are trying to get an idea how much money you would make using my system, and again, this is risking approximately $1,000 a trade, this will give you an idea. So this is 36 trades, okay? So you will, and this was taking all the morning quick exits. So a lot of these continued, I just like to be in and out quick. So for example, if you had risked $500 a trade, in those last trades in the last two months, which would you have made? You would have made a little over 15 grand. So everybody has to only risk what they can afford to lose. If you have questions about your risk based on the size of your account, you can always ask me for advice. But either way, this is, you know, this is real money that you could be making in the market. And these are all trades that I called in the room. Does anyone have any questions so far? The expectation that people have is that they're, that they're, that every trade is going to work. That's not realistic. What is realistic, and again, common sense, is that you understand your system should work most of the time. It really should, and mine does. But every once in a while, one isn't going to. And you can't get mad. You can't get mad at the market. You kind of just have to suck it up. You say, this is what this thing is. The benefit of trading and being a day trader is that you're in your house and you're working, you have freedom, you don't have a boss. I trade every morning in a half an hour and I'm done very quickly, sometimes in minutes, like the IBM, which we're gonna go over. And so there's so many benefits to doing it. You have to suck it up every once in a while when something doesn't work and not go crazy or not get negative about it, okay? One of the things that the crowd makes a big mistake is people are trying to find this, this golden goose, this golden egg to me, the golden gap is the golden egg because it works way more than it doesn't. And I can be in and out of the trades very quickly and it's profitable. Okay, to me, having around an 80% win ratio is a great system. And, you know, I mean, this is just something that you have to accept when you decide to do this. But you got to have an edge. 
And for me, it's really the points. It's 26 points. It's finding that money that, that's in those stocks that are hidden in the gaps, seeing where it's going to go, predicting it, taking the trade then once the gap happens on the live day. And for me, also, I really believe I get an edge when I short too. So opportunity sets up in golden gaps. You just got to get the right trades. Now let's take a look here at IBM. So the stock closed here, gap down. So on this day, you could have day traded it, which I did. And I also called an option, which is in play here. Here this fell into the day. I don't know where it closed into the day, but it had to move down, broke the low from the day of the gap. That, this was earnings. So IBM, what did it do? Stock closed, open, boom. I was in this here at 931, dropped, and I was out of it. The stock kept going. So I got out of this trade very, very quickly in a couple of minutes, but it kept going. If you want to stay in it, you could have. You could have done a second trade. I just did the one. This, to be able to take a trade like this and have this much profit this fast though, people, I mean, this is the exact reason that I love to day trade was in the trade for less than 10 minutes and made over $4,000, $4,250. So it took the trade, $149.75, it was a short. Shares quantity, $2,500, exit $148.05, boom. I, I mean, this is the kind of thing, this is a whole pay for some people for the whole month. Could be your goal for the week. And we, we get lots of these kinds of movers in earnings season. Right now it's third quarter earnings season, and here's the draw, okay? So again, you, this is very aggressive, but I get it right because I rated the gap ahead of time in the pre-market seeing that the stock would do this. If you're waiting to take it later, you're only getting half the move or less than half, do you see? Whereas the benefit of the point system is A, to know IBM is a stock to watch to get the trade, B, to know to short it, okay? C, to know how to find the targets, and then the entries to to take it and, and, and D to be done quickly, which is, you know, very advantageous because the longer actually that you're in trades, you're at the mercy of the market. What if the market's really bullish? bullish? What if the market's rallying? What if, you know, the president talks? What if there's an economic report? You never know, okay? Any questions here about, oh, I, I don't know why I have this up here. It's not, <laughs> sorry, I have the wrong titles. Actually, this is IBM, not CMG. <laughs> I had... CMG on the brain. <laughs> Any questions about IBM or anything so far, anyone? Anyways, you know, you, you, you've got to be able to understand how stocks are moving, all right? It really is about learning a system, seeing where they're going to go, implementing the system daily, okay? You chunk the money out in trades when you're taking them. You can do it for options. You can do it for the day trades. Now, here was the CMG option that I had called. Um, and again, this this was out till August, but I, I don't even know if anybody's still in this. I'll have to email the list. But, you know, the stock obviously was down at 336 today. So you can see here that when I called the trade with the strike, it was above the strike. It dropped through the strike. You know, crazy. And this these are the moves that stock make with institutional money, okay? The drop that the stock had from the day that I called it, this option trade on 7-Eleven, was 43 bucks and change into today. So that was about two weeks. Huge move, okay? And this is just to give you two examples because options are a little bit different. You pay a cost. You don't use stops. I use stops with my day trading. And again, you risk what you can afford. So the cost, this was a higher price. You could have gotten this at a cheaper price from the day at CMG. This was midday. If you had paid six bucks, okay, on the day I called it, exited in on July 18th, cost of the contract, you would have gotten 10 contracts because it was six bucks a piece, was six grand. If you had sold it at 22, what would your profit have been? $18,000, okay? Now, what if you could have only afforded to get one for 600? What would your profit have been? 1800 that's still great that's still amazing people okay so again you know to be able to make 1800 dollars risking 600 in an option trade which you just put on and watched it drop you know that's easy money but you've got to get the pick it's all about the pick 
CMG, Netflix, IBM, it's all about the stock pick, okay? Because you can't just take anyone in the world. You just can't do every gap in the world. If you happen to hold this, though, all the way down to today, which, again, like I said, I have to find out if anybody did, that was the big one, okay? You could have risked six grand and made $33,000 because you could have sold it today for around 39 bucks. Between the, between the bid and the ask, it was over 40 at one point today because of the drop, but you have to put an order out for options to get filled. I just, you know, these are the moves that we will see in earnings season in third quarter in July and August. This is the time, like, like Google tonight, which we're going to look at here because I think we're going to have time. Anyways, trading is about chunking it out. It's about income generation. And how do I do it? I trade gaps. I trade my system. It's called golden gaps. And if you want to consistently make a lot of money in the market, the only way that will happen is if you're trading on the side of institutional money, you have to have a way to spot it. You have to have a way to find it. If you want to consistently be profitable in the market, I don't think there's any other way to do it. I do not trade penny stocks. I think they're very risky. You have to take too much size. And I also don't think consistently you can predict the direction they're going to go either. And often when people have a, a very profitable day trading penny stocks, they turn around and lose a huge amount of money the next day. Okay, you have to find something that, that has a lot of volume. You know, I'm trading real stocks, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, you know, Coors, QCOM, stocks that you would know. You would know the name of the stock, Facebook. You would be familiar with it. They're companies, okay, they're not fly-by-nighters. I trade stocks with volume that actively trade. Oops. So anyways, if you're interested in learning my method, it's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And that's how you're going to use that information to make money. So everyone wants to talk about money. I showed you the examples if you had risked a thousand bucks, but you know, the, the way that you're going to do it is really understanding it. And that is why I think it is so important for people to actually uh, do the class before they trade with me in the room. So my class teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. It teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. It teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. And it teaches you how to get conviction in your trading and the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for a consistent profit. And I'm going to go back to this, although, although you know, not everyone here could afford to risk $6,000 in a trade. At some point, once you start making money in the market, you will be able to. And guess what? The idea of being able to make $33,000 in a span of two weeks, risking six grand if you could afford to do it, is phenomenal, people, okay? So, you know, for all the people out there that want to poo-poo and say you can't do it, that is totally false. You can make money trading, real money, a lot, okay? But you have to know what to do. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And if you don't, then you're going to lose. And that's the difference, okay? So I want to want to just talk about one thing here really quickly because, again, I talked to so many different people on the phone and they emailed me to come to the webinars. If, if I made a checklist, actually, I'm going to show you this first. If I, if I made a checklist of 10 things and I said, what if you did this thing, this thing, this thing? If I, if I made a checklist of 10 things and said, if you do all these things, then you're going to be successful and you're going to make this much money in the next month, okay, trading. If I said that to you, risking... Let's just go with, you know, if you're risking a thousand, if you could afford to do that, if you did all these things, and I wrote them all down, all the 10. If you knew you could be successful, and I gave you 10 things to do, would you be willing to do them all? What if there was something on that list that you didn't want to do? Now, just listen to me here. I'm going to try to make a point uh, that I think I'm going to be able to do very well. What if there was something on that list you didn't want to do? Okay. What sacrifices are you willing to make to have a career where you can do this? Some sacrifices, no sacrifices, because if you're not willing to make any sacrifices at all, the chances of you making it are slim to none. And I find that that is the case with many people. I'm not saying you're going to have to make huge sacrifices. I'm not saying you have to make a million. I'm saying, what if you had to make one? or some. 
If that meant that you could work from home for a half an hour every day, an hour every morning, and make several hundred thousand dollars a year, would you be willing to do what is necessary to do it? I think this is something you don't have to answer me now unless you want to. You can think about it yourself. But what if? What if someone came to you and said, here, I'm giving you this huge opportunity to do this method. However, you have to do everything I say, and you may have to make some sacrifices. Would you be willing to do it? And I think this is, you know, I'm just being completely very, very honest here with people because I think that people don't think it through enough. They, they, they really are not committed enough. They don't believe they will have to make any sacrifices, which isn't true. Okay, you might have to make one or more. But in the end, it's worth it. And that's, that's the point that I'm trying to make. Okay. Any questions by anyone here so far? Feel free to ask me. I have time. I'm, we're going to be done a little bit early here. I can't go over the Google. I didn't really talk about this a lot here today, but most of the trades that I do happen between 9.30 and 10 and in and out before 10, before 10 o'clock. I like to trade very, very quickly. And I think pretty much everybody here knows that when you day trade, you can do it from home. Okay, but one of the benefits of coming and learning my method is that you will gain conviction in your chart reading skills, gaps, the market, and your ability to be able to make money. And the room is a good support system for that. So if you're interested, I can teach you how to do this. My class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. It's this weekend, July 29th and 30th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're interested, you need to email me to sign up at melissathestockswitch.com. Cost of the class is $49.99. Does anyone have any questions at all about the class or anything? You get a one-hour break for lunch, and you can be anywhere in the world and do it because the class is online. As I said earlier, though, in the webinar, it's third quarter. We really only started earnings season last week, so you haven't missed that much. So this whole rest of the period between now and really Labor Day will be a very busy time Lots of companies reporting, busy time for gaps, okay? Um, and an important time for you to make money. You gotta make money when it's there in the market. It's one of those, one of those key things. You don't trade around the holidays when, when it's slow and people are on vacation. You trade when, when the market is busy. Now, I was offering this also, I'll say this really quickly at the end and then we'll talk about the Google. Um, I was offering the gap option letter for half off, 50%. Saturday and Sunday, a bunch of people emailed me late last night and had already gone to bed, so I decided to extend it through today for the webinar. If you want to sign up for just the option letter, which you get emailed the trades, like CMG, not the day trades, but the option trades. If you can do the options, if you can't trade in the morning and day trade, you would get the emails for the trades emailed to you directly when I call them, and the price of that is $1,500. There's going to be a lot this week because there's a lot of things reporting. Amazon's Thursday night. Again, I don't know what these stocks do yet. Um, Facebook's this week too, but I know, and CMG is this week too, but I know there's going to be a lot. This, I'm so extended this through tonight only. If you want to do it, email me right after the webinar. And then we hear some testimonials for some people um, who did the CMG. Okay, any questions from anyone at all? If not, I think then we'll quickly look at the Google. If you guys want to hang on here, just give me a minute here, Kathy. <gasps> Oh, Google's gapping down. Oh, my Lanta. That's going to affect the market. Wow. $9.99 it hit. Hold on. Let's see what the market's doing. I did see it had that move. Then I jumped in the webinar. But then sometimes they make a big move and then they flip themselves. Let me just look. So we closed here at 144.74. Uh, market's not down that much, actually. So here, I'm just looking at this here. We closed. Market's not down that much. 40 cents something. So it'd be interesting. So the market's slightly down with the Google earnings. But I, you know, see here, I'm not going to rate this tonight because I'm tired. But I don't know if this follows through lower. See, that's the thing. I don't know. I'll get up tomorrow morning in the pre-market. I'll rate it. And the reason I'm not going to look at tonight is A, I'm tired. And B, this, this stock could do something completely different by the morning. 
It may not have been gapping down. It could be gapping down at 900. I mean, this stock just moves like crazy. Right now, this second, though, it is gapping down, and I'm a little bit surprised, I must tell you. So it'll be interesting to see what this does tomorrow. But this should play a factor in the market movement tomorrow because the market was up at new highs in the queues today. Let me look at the SPY. So we closed. Yeah, not having that much of an effect in the, in the post market here, the market overall. So if Google gaps down tomorrow and does not fall and holds and rallies, market will continue higher. But I don't know that yet because I don't know where this opens and I haven't rated it. Does anyone have any questions at all about anything I talked about today? Institutional money. Let's see where IBM closed. 145 is the next target. Didn't get there today, but it's on its way. Anyone want to go over anything? See some familiar faces here today. All right, if you would like a trial to the trading room, I'll just put this in the room for this week, for the rest of the week. It should be a good week. You can email me here, melissa at thestockswish.com. If you want to sign up for the options letter for 50% off, that expires tonight. You got to email me that tonight. And if you're interested and have questions about the class, you can call me this week. The class is this weekend. Okie doke. All right, thanks for coming, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, Kathy.